Top Gun Maverick is impressive, and the word impressive here might even be an understatement. Top Gun Maverick is the long-awaited sequel to the infamous movie Top Gun, first released in theaters in 1986. I'll come clean here and admit I was never really a fan of the first Top Gun. It's an alright film, but looking back it feels terribly inferior compared to the enormous juggernaut that is the new sequel. The creative team behind Top Gun has had nearly 40 years to create the greatest possible sequel, and it's readily apparent that they put an enormous amount of work into this project. If the original Top Gun made it to the moon, then Top Gun Maverick is well outside our solar system and still going. This sequel outperforms its predecessor in every way imaginable, offering a higher level of quality in nearly every category. From the writing and acting, to the film's absolutely jaw-dropping practical effects, choreography, and cinematography. I've never been a huge fan of films in this vein, but Top Gun Maverick managed to not only surpass my expectations, but accomplish things that few films in the modern industry ever do, cementing itself as quite possibly one of the greatest sequels ever made. Today, I'd like to take a deep dive into Top Gun Maverick, to analyze how it improved where the first film failed, and how it managed to become so successful in our modern time. In order to analyze why Top Gun Maverick is so successful, I think it's first crucial to analyze its predecessor and examine where it failed. The first Top Gun is not a particularly great movie. It's a decent film that offers some iconic moments and great action sequences that hold up even by today's standards 40 years later. But despite these positive qualities, Top Gun suffers rather heavily from certain drawbacks, resulting in a rather polarizing viewing experience that leaves you enjoying certain parts and hating others. The first of these drawbacks, and most noticeable of all, is its writing. Top Gun is by no means supposed to be a particularly deep intellectual exercise, but that doesn't mean it can't be well written, engaging, and compelling. And unfortunately, the original Top Gun is far from any of these descriptors, offering what can only be referred to as a rather corny, uncomfortable, and sometimes painful experience when it comes to the character interactions and the dialogue. Sure, the first film offers some iconic dialogue moments such as... But unfortunately, these fun moments become problematic when they aren't used to supplement the character interactions and dialogue, but instead used in place of them. These issues are most apparent in the interactions between Maverick and his love interest, Charlie. It feels as though their dialogue is a non-stop tsunami of pickup lines and cliches that might as well have just been pulled straight from Fifty Shades of Grey. This lack of depth makes the dialogue feel empty, which contributes to a strong sense of inauthenticity and a lack of chemistry between Maverick and Charlie, rendering the relationship feeling meaningless. And unfortunately, this issue isn't isolated to just these two characters. It can be found in nearly every aspect of the film's writing. Every word exchanged between every individual is so cliché that it feels scripted, empty, and forced. These people and their moments don't feel real. While these lines may be memorable decades later, they harm the film greatly in the short term. Critical events such as the death of Maverick's lifelong friend, Goose, should theoretically elicit a feeling of deep sadness, but because the moment is built upon a foundation of meaningless character interactions, the moment simply feels empty. In addition to its rather substanceless characters and dialogue, the film suffers from a lack of a compelling or impactful character arc for its protagonist. The better half of the first film sets Maverick up to be an extremely talented but hot-headed loose cannon of a fighter pilot. He encounters numerous challenges and obstacles that result from his dangerous actions, and this provides what we think is the foundation for his character development, a change in attitude and perspective on what it means to be a good fighter pilot. But then Goose dies, and the film drastically shifts gears. While I find this event to be an incredibly interesting obstacle for a character such as Maverick, it deviates from the first half of the film, and creates the foundation for an entirely new and tangential character arc to develop, replacing the old one. With less than an hour to go, the film embarks in an entirely different direction. Maverick is now traumatized by the death of his partner and can't fly anymore. The film, of course, ends with him overcoming his trauma and moving past Goose's death, but the core of his character really hasn't changed all that much. He's still relatively the same hot-headed pilot he was at the start of the film, and there really isn't much to take away from the film in terms of thematic depth. While this video's intent isn't to rewrite the original Top Gun, I think it would have been much more powerful if the film had instigated Maverick's recovery from tragedy arc much sooner rather than later. Doing so would have given us more insight into his trauma, and allowed us to connect with him on a much more emotional rather than superficial level. Giving us more time to watch him grow out of that trauma would have provided for a much more impactful end to the film. 
The original Top Gun suffered heavily when it came to its writing, resulting in unrealistic characters, an empty emotional context, and an uncompelling narrative. Top Gun Maverick, on the other hand, seems to have recognized the mistakes of its predecessor and does an absolutely phenomenal job at addressing each and every one of them. This sequel is leagues above the original, especially when it comes to the quality of writing it brings to the table. Top Gun Maverick does a great job at referencing much of the original film, but it makes a noticeable effort to steer clear of much of what made the first movie feel so superficial. The dialogue feels not only natural and believable, but more importantly, purposeful and emotional. With Tom Cruise delivering what may easily be the best performance of his life, alongside a fantastic array of talented actors, each delivering their own amazing performances, Every scene of this film feels genuinely moving. Unlike the first Top Gun, the emotions, desires, and actions of these characters all feel substantiated, believable, and tangible. They're in positions most of us will never experience, and yet we can relate to them and step into their shoes because these characters feel real. This movie feels real. Top Gun Maverick emanates much darker, more serious undertones compared to its predecessor. Don't get me wrong, the film isn't without comedy, but the writers have a much clearer notion of the deeper emotions they're trying to evoke both within a specific scene and across the film as a whole. There are scenes, such as many of Maverick's thoughts and memories of Goose, that feel genuinely moving, to the point where even my own emotional reactions to the events on screen caught me off guard. And even when the film isn't trying to elicit a sadder emotional response, the writers do an amazing job of immersing you in the characters, the action, and the story as a whole. This film does a fantastic job of keeping you engaged on the edge of your seat from start to finish. It's this elevated writing quality that allows the film to ground itself in reality in a way that allows us to fully connect with its characters and place ourselves in the story. And when we've done so, we can truly immerse ourselves in what the film has to offer. It's here that Top Gun Maverick distinctly separates itself from the original film. Whereas Top Gun might have felt like a one-time throwaway summer blockbuster, Top Gun Maverick feels so captivating that it no longer feels like a movie. It elevates itself to an extremely memorable and immersive experience. What I find to be most impressive, however, when it comes to Top Gun Maverick's writing is its ability to utilize the events of the first film to develop an even stronger character arc for its protagonist. Here, Maverick's arc is once again centered around Goose's death many years ago, but this time he must not only struggle with his demons internally, he's also forced to face them head on as a Top Gun instructor, tasked with preparing a group of Top Gun graduates for a mission that could very well leave many of them dead. Among this group of individuals, we find Rooster Bradshaw, Goose's son, and it's here that we watch as Maverick grapples with his trauma as he interacts with the son of his dead friend. It's incredibly well done, and impressive that Top Gun Maverick managed to take a moment that felt somewhat empty in the first film, and turn it into an incredibly powerful tool for the development of its character here. Maverick is an incredibly talented pilot, that much is well conveyed by both films, but it's Top Gun Maverick that takes the leap and decides to delve deeper into his character. It's through expertly written character interactions, dialogue, and a phenomenal display of emotional acting that we truly gain insight and even relate to his arduous journey towards self-growth. It's through the film's wonderful and intelligent use of flashbacks and allusions to the first film that Top Gun Maverick is able to create a genuine sense of meaningful loss. But what I find most impressive about this film in comparison to its predecessor is the fact that Maverick's character development is directly tied to the film's phenomenal action sequences. It's here that while the jet fighter action sequences are still a large focus of the film, the evolution of his character is not only placed right alongside the action, but it's intricately woven into that action. It's only when he leads his students through the action that Maverick learns not only how to be a better person, a better mentor, and even a better fighter pilot, but when he finally learns how to let go of his trauma. It is through the absolutely gripping jet fighter choreography that Maverick grows and develops as a character. And of course, it should be said that while the first film definitely boasted a great display of action, Top Gun Maverick's cinematography and choreography are incomparable, and quite possibly unparalleled by any other film in a similar vein, practical effects or CGI. Though the actors aren't piloting these jets themselves, they're all giving their performances from the secondary cockpits of real airborne jet fighters, and it shows. There's something absolutely enthralling about watching an impressive blockbuster that's been made in as practical a manner as possible. Whether it's the acting, the way in which the jets are filmed, or the incredible sound design of the film, Top Gun Maverick's action sequences are absolutely insane. It's rare that I ever find myself exclaiming audibly in a movie theater, but it's wholeheartedly deserved. I mean it when I say 
that this film offers an action experience that no other film can even come close to giving you. Every jet fighter sequence is so skillfully executed and masterfully filmed that it truly feels like you're in the movie, right alongside the pilots. Stunning choreography and expert cinematography coupled with an absolutely phenomenal sound design allows the film to provide one of the most heart-pounding displays of action ever on the big screen. Top Gun Maverick managed to elevate itself to an entirely separate realm of quality in comparison to its predecessor. Creating a sequel is incredibly difficult, and rightfully so, but it's films such as Top Gun Maverick that know how to learn from what came before them to take the crucial elements that defined the original film and mold them into something entirely new, something bolder, more impressive, and more impactful than before. Top Gun Maverick managed to achieve something few sequels ever come close to, and it did so by expertly utilizing the sensational core of the original to develop a much more emotional, immersive, and even more compelling narrative. A narrative that is directly tied to the absolutely jaw-dropping action choreography and cinematography displayed by the film. And it is through this clear effort to elevate the quality of its writing, ground its characters in an emotional reality, develop clear and compelling character arcs, and tie the development of its characters into its unbelievably gripping action sequences that Top Gun Maverick manages to deliver one of the best cinematic experiences of 2022 thus far, and cements itself as one of the best sequels ever made. I am giving Top Gun Maverick a solid 8 out of 10. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you all next time.